Hello, welcome back to the channel. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Thanks for stopping by to hang out with me for a little bit here on Christmas Eve. Tonight we're gonna talk about the 12 discs of Christmas. I built a 12 disc bag here in my Rebel. It's going to start with my very first disc, the first disc I ever had, which was in fact a Christmas present. And we're gonna move on to the present, going through and reminiscing a little bit, a little bit of nostalgia, and talking about some of the different things I've thrown over the years and how my bag has changed since the, the, uh, the first Christmas when I got my first discs. So I thought it would just be kind of a fun video. The holidays are a very kind of emotional, uh, emotional time it's a very nostalgic time it's a time that I think a lot about my past and my family my brother and my mom who are no longer with us just a very emotional time and I thought maybe some folks would be you know perhaps lonely or just trying to hang out a little bit and geek out on some plastic with me for a little bit and I thought it might be fun to uh, yeah reminisce take a little walk down memory lane talk about some of the plastic that I've thrown over the years and uh, some of the things that I've kind of switched to as we go and this actually ended up being a pretty reasonable 12 disc bag that I'm sure I could go out and play around with with uh, almost no trouble so just real quick before we get into it I'm gonna use my rebel here for uh, visual representation and as always you guys can use my code Dis golf nerd 10 to get 10 percent off anything you need from upper park as i am a member of the team they've been hugely supportive and i'm very much looking forward to continuing to work with them heading into the new year got some fun stuff in the works and let's get into it first of all way back 2006 my first putter ever christmas day 2006 was this innova thumb track birdie weird disc it's got this kind of flat edge onto it it's kind of a lid more than anything it kind of looks like the lid you take off of a you know container of sour cream or something like that and these were very common back in those days at you know big box type retailers and this particular disc came from a retailer called big five sporting goods and it came with a Valkyrie, DX Valkyrie. Those are my first two discs. I didn't use this one for very long, to be honest. Um, it was never my favorite, and it's kind of outdated for sure. Even in those days, it was definitely not a popular disc. But it was one of the ones that, for whatever reason, Innova was uh, shipping out to Sports Authority and Big Five and those type of places. So, so it's something that you would definitely run into in the racks there. But got me started. Not the worst disc in the world. But uh, definitely not something I would, I would continue to use, and I didn't use it for very long. I definitely started using Banger GTs were the next putters I tried, and then I moved on. I had all kinds of different stuff. If you guys are curious and you're really bored, you can go back, and it's all cataloged here on the channel, all of my old in the bag videos. Going back to the first video I ever made, which I believe was in like 2011 or something like that quite a while ago and uh, you can see all the stuff I've been throwing you'll see some of these discs in those old videos for sure next we're gonna move on to a soft magnet and this one I believe was also a Christmas present and was a disc that I've been throwing for a very long time now and you guys know that I'm I'm kind of well known for throwing these magnets even though I haven't been carrying them of late just based on the courses I'm playing I haven't really been using them but this is my original one this old orange four chain soft magnet I think this one is yeah, 165 grams. I can't show you the bottom because all my ink and stuff, but yeah, 165. It's probably less than that now with the wear and stuff that's been uh, put on this disc, but still flies amazing. And funny story about this magnet. So what happened was I had this disc and I didn't really care for it that much. And it ended up in my buddy's trunk in the trunk of his car and one day i took it back out of the trunk and i had noticed that from the heat it had kind of warped it got this puddle top it got those little indentations there and i was like man that's interesting i wonder if it still flies and from that day forward i fell in love with this disc i don't know what it was it just kind of became magical with that little puddle top and it's just a flip up laser machine woods warrior one of my favorite discs of all time another disc early on two drivers that I threw early on was the Valkyrie like I said I had DX Valkyries originally and then this was a 150 class Valkyrie this is my first ace disc from back in 09 I believe yeah Rockwood hole five way back in 2009 my first ace ever um, and this is a 150 class you know pre-flight number star valkyrie i dyed this thing in an old electrical tape dye video that has been viewed many many times you can see how washed out it is at this point but great disc my favorite go-to driver for quite a while oh, and then 
after I don't know, you know, some of this stuff is a little foggy at this point in terms of what came, uh, what came before one or the other. But then another one of my early favorite discs was this Stalker, and at one period of time I was throwing nothing but Discraft, and I had two or three uh, Stalkers at all times, and I had some buzzes, flex buzzes. Pro D stalkers, um, or no, Pro D forces rather. They were all Z stalkers, and I had a crystal, um, had a titanium page, first run titanium. I still have that somewhere. And the stalker is an interesting disc. I don't know if I have ink to worry about on this one, but if you take a look at it, it's kind of like a mid range fairway driver hybrid. Kind of flies like a buzz, but longer, essentially. Kind of an underrated disc, to be honest. Those straight up uh, Z stalkers, stock Z stalkers are fantastic flyers that a lot of people would uh, would enjoy if they gave them a shot. But somewhat of a, you know, underserved mold, as it, as it were. Moving on from there, we have my second Ace disc, which is from 2010 at Rooster Rock West, hole seven or no, Rooster Rock East, hole seven. And this is also 165 grams dome top ESP Meteor. These old ESP Meteors were awesome discs and I still like this one. This one still actually still flies pretty good, but I don't really carry it because I have other, other stuff that I'm more comfortable with now. But for quite a while, this was my go-to mid-range and I really liked it. Early on, I used a Coyote was my first mid-range that I don't have anymore. Um, then I had a Z Comet that I don't have anymore and then the Meteor came after that. And for a while I was kind of toying between the Meteor and uh, an X Comet. Back in the day I had some Fly Die X Comets that were really sweet. From the All Discraft bag, moving on from there, the next part of this um, was MVP. I started throwing some MVP stuff and that's what broke my bag open um, from All Discraft as it was for a couple of years at least. In those days, I had an anode, a uh, soft anode. I really loved the Envies when those were relatively new. I was an early adopter of the soft Envy and still a disc I'll recommend to this day. Now everybody knows what the Envy, Envy is, but for a while there, I was one of the few people throwing it. Back in the day, um, MVP was kind of niche. And uh, to represent MVP in my, my period of throwing them, I have this Pro Tour 2018 MVP, and this is a... Atom. So this is a Neutron Atom that was sent to me directly by Steve Dodge. And we tested, me and Andy tested these. I filmed him throwing them and we produced assets that went on to the Disc Golf Pro Tour broadcasts um, during the World Championships and some other Pro Tour events on Smashbox at the time. And um, yeah, this is one of the discs we tested for, for those videos and one that I still have in my collection. I wish I had the other ones. The other one was, uh, Andy has one in his bag that's a uh, Color Glow Zone, ESP Glow Zone. That's a, a beefy disc. And then I had a Justice that, that Steven sent me that I lost, unfortunately, at Hornings Hideout, which really sucked. Um, and then from there, I started throwing some other stuff too. We're just gonna take this stack out now and make it easier. Moving on from MVP, I started trying other things when they hit the market, like the Dynamic Discs um, discs. And one of my earliest ones was this Trespass. This is an old pre-Sweden Lucid Trespass, but it's completely opaque plastic. And this is one of my favorite discs of all time. I could go play around with this thing tomorrow and know exactly what it's going to do. Um, I'm just not really needing the Trespasses anymore. For a while, they were my go-to driver. I had a few different Lucids, um, mostly pre-Swedens like this. What that means is they don't say made in Sweden on the bottom. They just say dynamic discs. And they usually have a digital printed weight on there. This uh, camera is not going to be able to see it anyway, so I'm not going to show you. But... Uh, this was one that I got at Beaver State right shortly after the DD lineup was released and still an amazing flyer. I mean, this thing I threw for several years as my go-to flyer and look at how little wears on this guy. Like it's still absolutely money and I could throw it for another five years plus with no issue whatsoever. Love that disc and I have two or three of those pre-Swedens that are still laying around if I ever want to call on them for active duty. Shortly around that time, then also Latitude 64 picked up Ricky, and as a big Ricky fan in those days, um, I started throwing the Compass and lots of other Latitude discs in that time frame. And this is one of my favorite Compasses that I threw for several years. This is an old Ricky pre-World Champ. He had not won the Worlds yet um, for this one. And this one is just an absolute 
line holder as neutral as it gets put this thing on any line and it'll just take it start to finish and i, I mostly threw it for straight shots and turnovers and it worked phenomenal i have a, a whole bunch of these compasses maybe someday we'll take you through the whole um stack of compasses that i have i have some throwers and then i have a whole collection of ricky compasses all the different versions because uh rick's my favorite player and i had a fun time collecting those through the years and moving on from there another disc that i've had for quite a while and this is the latitude 64 caltrop this will be our go-to approach disc in this bag if we were to out, get out there and throw it and this is a disc i've used for several years it's still just as good as it was the day i got it and could get thrown in at any time really great disc you can throw it as hard as you want flat and straight or slight hyzer and it will just fly really straight and have a nice fade to it it has no real flip and it's super consistent doesn't glide super far low ground play Tre not, uh, just tremendous disc and I was, I was trying to say tremendous and phenomenal at the same time phenomenal disc <laughs> the latitude 64 caltrop soft plastic just one of the best that i've had and this thing's been around for a long time could get thrown at any time it's, at the moment i'm using harps just because um i got those to use for forehand and I find them to be just as effective backhand, so I really don't need both. That's really the only reason I'm not still throwing that exact Caltrop, and this is the first one I ever got um, that I believe DD sent me for review way back in the day. Another disc I initially took in for review and fell madly in love with is this first run Z Thrasher. And that brought into a period of time where I was throwing nothing but Thrashers as my go-to drivers. This one went alongside the Trespasses for a while. And then I noticed that with uh, different plastic variations of the Thrasher, I kind of didn't need both. And I clubbed down to just having a, a number of different Thrashers. Honestly, looking back, probably a mistake in the long run. I probably would have been better served continuing to throw my Trespasses for more stability and just throw the thrashers for more flippy shots but they started to overlap and I was going through a phase of trying to downsize my bag and I moved on but this one um, also an interesting story I lost this one I was throwing in at Vance Park somebody just picked it up and walked off with it at some point I don't know when it happened um, and uh, it came back to me several years later it was found at a completely different course and my ink was the only ink still left on it, it still flies awesome I might actually throw in a clip of me throwing it the first throw back with it since after I got it back um, out at Vance again I hole nine parked it first round thrasher back to me after four years let's see if I still can throw it Um, and moving on, my number one, Gobi. Now, if I turn the camera over a little bit, you'd see I have quite a few Gobies stacked up. And you guys have seen them before on the channel as well, if you've been paying attention. But my first one ever was this orange one. Once again, this disc was sent to me by Anthony uh dg weekly over at, at dd and i had no idea these were even a thing at the time i don't even know if i had seen them yet he sent me one as like a surprise like hey here's a disc review it check it out right when they hit the market and i fell super super in love with this disc and it maintains its spot as arguably my favorite disc of all time Latitude 64 Gobi, sadly no longer being made, um, but man, is it a fantastic disc. If you can find a used one somewhere for a decent price, definitely re recommend checking it out. Unfortunately, quite uh, quite spendy to find those these days, um, but I luckily have uh, you know a handful of throwers and then some other new ones laying around, so I'm covered for a while. But yeah, I would love to recommend the Gobi to more players. You know, if you guys could go buy them, I'd, I'd be recommending them constantly. But you can't, so I kind of don't. And finally, the 12th disc of Christmas. And this is a Latitude 64 Havoc, given to me by my friend Chris Caulfield. And this one is a pop top burst gold line havoc this one's really stable and really nice and what happened here is kind of the reverse of what happened with the thrasher where i started throwing this havoc and i really liked it i put it in the bag because it was more stable than my thrashers and extremely consistent and just flying really nice and then i started testing more havocs and they uh, uh, you know eventually just knocked all the thrashers out of my bag and i'm not i'm throwing nothing but havocs for distance at this point but this is the first one i got and rec and it's still something that's in my bag right now and represents my current bag and where we're at so 
those are the 12 discs of Christmas. So that's the video for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you guys very much. If you've not seen it yet, I do have a holiday giveaway that's live right now. You can win an evader and a shield. So I'll put that in the end screen coming up here in just a second. Thank you so much for all your continued support. It's been an awesome year. The channel has grown by thousands of subscribers this year. I was looking back on it and I think last year I was at 9,000 and we'll be heading into the new year at more than 13,000, 13 and, and change. I think like 13,200 already. Um, and it's amazing. I can I continue to try to do my best to make the content as good as I can and provide you guys with fun and informative stuff to watch and hopefully you guys like it. And I appreciate you all. Merry Christmas, happy holidays in whichever way and whatever way you choose or are able to spend it and enjoy it. I hope you guys have a great night and a great day tomorrow and uh, safe and happy holiday season for the rest of the way. I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheers.